Good morning. How are you? Hope you're doing well wherever you are. And uh, welcome to today's uh, Cichlids and Coffee. Hope wherever you are, you're drinking out of the new Cichlids and Coffee mug. Just got it added to the uh, Teespring. And uh, off of the advice of, uh, I think it was uh, Marla Craig, one of the viewers suggested we need a Cichlids and Coffee coffee mug. So um, welcome everybody from all over. I noticed we have someone from uh, New Brunswick, Canada on here. Let's take a look at who's, let's take a quick look. And uh, hello, Neil. How are you, Neil? Renee, what'd you get there? Five inches of snow, wow. Well, here we're having this uh, rolling thunder and lightning. Woke me up in the middle of the night. It was like somebody was doing flash photography outside of my bedroom. Every Every five seconds, a bright, bright flash, and then a very loud rumble. And you could you could hear the storm moving away. You could hear it coming in. At one point, there were some loud cracks, like right above my house. I mean, it it, it sounded like um, like one of these power electrical towers had blown up or something, like right over my house. I mean, it was actually very scary. And then uh, then it started calming down. And just now, I just heard some 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 thunder again. So, um, as I mentioned in the comments, if, if I if I disappear, it's because I uh, it's because I um, had a power outage, which is entirely possible. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that we went through the whole night with the level of lightning strikes that we had, and that the power was still was still on. So you know, knock on wood, and uh, <laughs> let's hope for the best. So, um, very quick shout out to all of you who did Super Chats last week. Very nice of you, really helps to keep the uh, things going, helps me picking up equipment and all that good stuff. Uh, this, this week, I think what we'll do, the, um, I'll tell you what, whoever does, a, um, whoever does a Super Chat this week, we'll do the same thing. Anyone who does a Super Chat this week, we'll send you the, a set of the new stickers. These are the new stickers that we have, and we'll also, um, and the, the the biggest super chat, we'll send you a co-op towel. I love these towels, by the way. I have them all over my fish room. These are from the co-op. We'll send you a co-op towel, and uh, in a brand new bag, not a used one. So you'll get a set of stickers, a co-op towel, and this is for the top super chat today. You will receive the last the last sticker I have of my old school stickers. That's the last one. <laughs> and I'll throw in one of the stickers from the Cichlid Shack. One of the sponsors of the channel is the Cichlid Shack. We'll throw one of their stickers in too. Now, if you have these stickers already and you don't want them, just tell me in the email, but you can always use another towel, all right? Who can't use another towel in their, in their fish room? I sure can. So, um, <clears throat> hey, Candy, I'm glad you're here. She had a little vacation last week. Uh, Deborah Sanders is here, and Michael Machos. Is that uh, Chala? Chala, Chala? Message retracted. Chala, you're in trouble already. And uh, Jamie saying, Armand, Scott's Aquatics, Elijah Davis, good morning to all of you. And I think GP is here as well, and Echoed. And let's see here. All right, so let's let's go ahead and uh, let's let's officially kick it off. What do you say? If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, hit that sub button and that bell and. That way you always get notified when there's new content and it tells YouTube that you're getting something out of the channel and it encourages YouTube to recommend the channel to other fish keepers, okay? And also, a big shout out to my friends at the Cichlid Shack. Be sure if you go to the Cichlid Shack to use Shack Attack 10 for a 10% discount. And that could be on food, fish, whatever you wanna get, okay? And also a big shout out to Expert Matic, to Higer, to um, Underwater Galleries, 
and to all my friends over at Elite Cichlids, and I hope I'm not missing anybody. But the channel has a lot of friends, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a review. <clears throat> I just got this uh, titanium, this titanium Tiger Pinpoint Titanium Heater, and it looks like it's it's controlled. It, it comes with a remote control. Pretty fancy. You can see it here. I'm going to be doing a review on this, and I'm going to be including a including this Hyger pump that was sent to me. Look at this Hyger. This is a DC pump. I've been I've been dying to try a DC pump because I hear that they're a lot quieter, uh, a bit more efficient, and people who have DC pumps love them. This is a DC water pump. I'm going to be incorporating this incorporating this water pump into the uh, the the 90 gallon, the custom aquarium that I had built by the uh, glass cages here in Nashville. So I'm gonna be doing a sump. I'm gonna get a, a 29 gallon aquarium. And what I've done is I've ordered, I've ordered from um, Bulk Reef Supply, BRS. If you're on YouTube at all, you see their, you see their commercials all the time, but they sell a rigid mesh. And basically, it's like it's like a filter sponge, but it but it's it's rigid. It it it's uh, it stands up on its own. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put a couple pieces of rigid mesh that have been custom cut into a 29 gallon, so they stand up and put a little pressure on the outside walls so that they stand up. And then between those those two pieces, a a coarse and a fine piece. I'm going to put a uh, either a two or a three inch block of Swiss Tropicals Madden sponge. So I'm going to have a sponge right in the middle. And so the water is going to come down into one side, go through that material, and then get pumped back up to the tank. And I'm going to be using a uh, a CSA, a CSA pump from uh, that Jay Wilson sent to me. And uh, pumps about 2,500 gallons an hour. I hope it's not too much. It might be too strong for that 29 gallon. We'll see. I might have to go for the um, maybe a 75 gallon sump, maybe a 55 gallon sump. We'll see how how I can dial that in. I'm going to be using uh, gate valves and uh, all kinds of other. You know, I'll make a video when I create that sump that sump system. But that's going to be happening uh, soon, and uh, I'm excited. I also have a uh, another project. Which one? Who who can tell me what they think? Who can tell me what they think this stuff is for? What do you think this is for? And this. I got three of these. What do you think those are for? This comes with a little level attached to it. And uh, I started watching some videos and uh, started taking some notes. And uh, some of the notes, some of the notes started on napkins. <laughs> you see all the, all the actual rough notes here on napkins. Uh, then I formalized it and took it over to a legal pad to a path. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some stands. And I'm going to overbuild them. I'm going to make them very, very strong. I'm going to use uh, four by fours in the corners. And uh, I'm going to build a couple aquarium stands. These aquarium stands are going to be for some 120, 125-gallon uh, tanks that I'm going to be picking up and, uh, and using for perhaps predators, some of the larger haps, like this fellow right here. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm working out a deal here with, uh, with James over at the Cichlid Shack. And uh, I'm going to be picking up some pre-cut lumber over at the Home Depot and uh, putting together a, uh, a couple stands. I've watched some of the videos. You know, there's, there's some great videos on YouTube. Joey, of course, the king of DIY, he has a lot of, lot of videos on building uh, stands. I also watched some that were put out by some uh, by some saltwater fellows. I forget their name, but um, 
I, I, I'm kind of blending the two styles and I've come up with uh, a design that I think is going to be very, very strong and worry-free. I'm not going to have to worry about it at all. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm also waiting for the stand from, from the uh, Glass Asylum so I can put that 90-gallon tank on it. And uh, I'm going to need some friends to come over. It's going to take probably, uh, probably four of us to position the tank on the stand. It, it's a very, very heavy tank. Uh, we, it's, it's going to come out to about a thousand pounds, uh, when it's full of water and, uh, and, and, you know, substrate and what have you. So it, it's going to be a very heavy, so I'm having them build a stand for that a very heavy duty stand and I'll have some friends come over. We'll, we'll, we'll do a tank lifting and, uh, <laughs> put that thing in place. Hopefully nobody will get a hernia. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I was, I was. I was watching uh, John and Lisa the other night at, at, on their live stream, KG Tropicals. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. They've been around for a long time. Were very influential on me when I first got into um, African cichlids. Uh, this is way back in the day. Before, I mean, since then, John disappeared, went off YouTube and came back. And now he's bigger than ever uh, with the help of Lisa. But... Um, he was talking about how some of these companies don't get it. You know, like like he reaches out to companies and because he doesn't have a store, he doesn't have like a fish store, uh, they they don't really pay attention to him. And it's very frustrating, very frustrating to him. And I get it. I get it. I've reached out to some companies like Marineland and people like that, and I never hear back. The, um, but I'll tell you who does get it are, are these uh, up-and-coming uh, foreign companies like Tiger, and expert Matic, I mean, they you you contact them or they contact you. You don't even have, you don't even contact them. They send you an email. They go, hey, look, I saw your I saw your uh, video. Like we like your channel, and they start sending you stuff. So they really get it. They really get where the market is going and how to reach uh, fish keepers. And uh, they're doing a great job of it. Some of these bigger companies have got to get with it because if they don't, they're gonna they're gonna miss the boat. And uh, maybe they just want to sell to the, uh, maybe just to the Petco's and and uh, you know the, the Pet Smarts, the big, the big chains. I don't know, I don't know. But I think that the social media platform uh, marketplace is going to do nothing except continue to grow and grow and grow. And uh, I'm excited. I, I love being part of it. I love having that Amazon store, you know, where you can go and get products that that I've that I've used before. And uh, uh, Candy can share the link, the Amazon store. It, it's real, it's, real, it's amazon.com slash shop slash Ben Ochart. Real simple. The cool thing about that store, and for any of you out there that are thinking about starting a channel, if you open an Amazon store and someone uses your link to get to Amazon, and then let's say you don't buy anything at the store. You don't need any of the products I have there. And I have everything. I have pumps and filter media and and um, uh, fil uh, I have uh, lights, I have cameras, computers, everything. But let's say you don't want anything in the store and you go elsewhere on Amazon and while you're there, you decide to go ahead and pick up some lawn furniture. My channel gets a little teeny, teeny, teeny percentage. It's really small, but it does get a percentage for having used the link to get to Amazon. So it's a really cool program actually. So. So these uh, manufacturers of um, of aquarium products uh, better get with it because they're going to miss the boat because it, it's, uh, I mean, Amazon certainly gets it. And a lot of these companies, like especially ones out of China, they really get it. And they're hitting hard on the uh, social media platform providers. So um, I was talking to someone the other day. Actually, I was talking to, to, to James over at, at the Cichlid Shack, and we were talking about creating videos and making videos for YouTube and, and how you get to a point where there's, like, what haven't you covered? Like, what topic do you still need to talk about that you haven't already talked about in a dozen videos? And, and because of that, I mean, he, he felt that he was a little bit like he kind of burned out a little bit. I mean, he's real he's real busy anyway with his shop. I mean, he's got tremendous time and effort uh, that he has to put into running a shop. Anyone who runs a small business out there, especially a brick and mortar like 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 a fish store, knows how much effort and time it to put in. 
So he got a little burned out on, on the you know on the YouTube video thing, putting out a video, and uh, and he asked me. He said, "How? What are you gonna do? I mean, what 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 haven't you talked about? What what's left to go over with your viewers? Yeah." And I started thinking about it, and I and and you know, it, 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 there's there's a tremendous amount to talk about actually. I mean, you think about the projects that are coming up. You think about the um, the new direction I'm going in with New Fish, and uh, I might be starting a, a Lethronops colony. I might be starting, uh, I'm still seriously considering Discus. I mean, I've got a lot of things going on, so there's a lot of adventure still ahead. And what happens is, as I go through these experiences, I pick up different, I pick up different knowledge, and I pick up different tips, I become more educated, and I then, in turn, can pass on that education to you. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that's almost a little bit embarrassing. It was one of those little aha moments. Somebody watched my recent video on powerheads, and they made a really good point. They said, hey, look, look at the box. Look at the Hyger, look at the Hyger box and see if it says Powerhead anywhere on the box. And uh, it doesn't, it doesn't say Powerhead. It says Wave Maker. And you know, ever since I've been in the hobby, it's been kind of interchangeable for me. Okay, a Powerhead's a Powerhead, Wave Maker's a Wave Maker. And, uh, and the truth is, is that, the, no, they're actually, they're, they're different. I've been using them interchangeably. And, and the person made a, a a, a good point in their comment. They were very, they were, they were educational. They, they were, um, they were considerate in what they said. It wasn't like one of those comments like, hey, you know, you're an idiot. Uh, you shouldn't be giving advice. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I do get people like that from time to time. And I, and I, uh, I take a tremendous amount of joy in blocking them and deleting them. But this person came across and said, hey, look, um, I just noticed during the video that you're using the term interchangeably. And there is a difference. A power head is, it's a nozzle. It's, 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 it's just a nozzle pointed and it's just pushing water. It's just a power head. It's just pushing water. And uh, whereas a wave maker is, you know, you have a grill, you have a grill over it and it breaks up the water as it goes through the grill. As it goes through the cover, the water goes in waves. So you have one that's making waves and one that's just a power. It's just water being powered through and it's just creating a lot of water movement. So you have a power head and you have a wave maker. I really, I mean, I, I kind of had an idea there was a difference, but I never really knew as clearly as that, that that was the difference. And it was one of those little aha moments. And I love that people will take the time and go, hey, Ben, I know you were saying this, but you should consider these points. And and so anyway, always be learning, right? Here I am, always learning. I was really excited about that, that, that I finally got it clarified in my head. What's a powerhead? A powerhead is just a nozzle pushing water and a wave maker has the cover on it and, and it's, it's sending out the water in waves. Seems stupid now that you think about it, but I didn't have that clarity. So in that area, I was the village idiot. So... <clears throat> Anyway, I thank all of you that, that from time to time have given me advice and pointers and education. I am so serious when I say always be learning, and we all learn from each other here. And so there's a tremendous amount to cover, a tremendous amount to continue to communicate with you about. I'm going to be adding, um, I'm going to be giving that that Eureka read probably one more shot. The one thing I didn't try, and some of you are probably laughing right now, thinking, you know, I'm just, maybe I'm too stubborn, maybe I'm... Uh... <laughs> but that Eureka read is just beautiful. I don't know if you can even see him. I, let me see if I can turn this camera and show you. He's just such a gorgeous fish. Let me see if I can get him on the, on the camera.
can see the mess over there. Beautiful fish. So, you know, he's he's real pretty. He has me sort of hypnotized a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm in a trance. I'm under his power. So I'm going to probably give him one more, one more shot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some additional cichlids, African cichlids. I'm going to put him in with him and see how he gets along in that 29 and see if he, if they don't kill each other. Um, as part of the quarantine process, I'm going to put him, and then if they all kind of mellow out and get along, I'm going to move, I'm going to move him along with the four or five other cichlids I get over to the 55 and try him one, try him one more time. There's, there's two things I didn't try before I gave up on him. And, and you know, if you saw the video on what I did, I tried a lot. I tried, I tried just about everything I'd ever heard of. I lowered temperature. I changed the core. I uh, removed females. I, you know, I mean, it's, it's like I did everything I could think of. And he still was a jerk. But um, I didn't try truly a well-stocked, a well-stocked tank. So maybe with five, you know, five additional tank mates, maybe four or five additional tank mates, together with the fish that are already in there, which for the most part are getting along, um, you know, they're getting along fine. They're doing the usual African cichlid chases from time to time. But uh, maybe with four or five more fish in there, things will mellow out. And uh, right now, the the uh, the phoenix. The one you see right in the middle of the tank usually is is the is the one that's running the show, and um, but you know the other fish do come out and swim around. It's not like before where everybody was hiding. Of course, when I say that, everybody's hiding. But um, but anyway, so I'm gonna try try one more thing before I completely write off that uh, that Jake that Eureka Red Jake because he's just such a spectacular specimen. Uh, James and I were even talking about possibly getting some females and uh, putting some females in there and maybe breeding them because he's just such a beautiful fish. And he's all alone. I don't know if you folks watch Darius. Uh, I think it's DW Darius on YouTube. He keeps a, a variety of fish, uh, South American, New World, uh, very large uh, South American cichlids. And he's got he's got one that's a, it's like a Dovi Jaguar hybrid mix and he was talking about how he's kept him alone all by himself in a tank and how beautiful he's become. And because the only interaction that he has is Darius, he really interacts with him. I mean, he follows his hand and, and he, he's always following him around. And, and, and it's just a, they've just developed this sort of bond. And he put out a video on, on the, like the, the advantage of having a fish uh, alone in a tank you become sort of their tank mate. You're the tank mate of that fish, and that fish will then chase you around and, and, and interact with you. And, and also, because nobody is nipping or chasing or harassing that fish, the fish totally blossoms. They, they get the most unstressed, beautiful colors and finage, you know, the fins become beautiful and, and without any little tears or rips that they would normally have with other fish. And that's what's going on with this uh, Eureka Red. I mean, he's just, uh, he's all by himself over there. He's got a couple little um, little cherry uh, cherry plecos. But uh, but he's just getting prettier and prettier. So, so I think I might, I might hold on to him. And uh, uh, we'll see. If you have some comments on that or some ideas, go ahead and share them. And I'd like to hear what you have to say. And uh, by the way, some of you did get your stickers. What do you think of them? What do you think of these stickers? I like them. I, I started using this company called uh, Sticker Mule. Sticker Mule. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I'll, I'll say their name. Uh, Sticker Mule. And, they, and they, they did a good job. The price was fair. And I think the quality is good. You know, they made round stickers, which I like. So you don't have to peel them out of a square thing. And it's, uh, they're nice. So, um, Let's take a look here at, uh, I'm gonna scroll back on the chat because it looks like I missed some super chats. Scrolling through.
Let's see here. Iman Fountain. Iman, am I pronouncing that right? Iman Fountain, thank you so much for that. Love your videos, Ben. Uh, ben, I've been keeping fish for over 50 years, but still learning. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're close, Iman. My first tank was around age six or seven. I'm, I'm 66 now. So uh, yeah, we're right in there. And uh, always learning, always learning. And uh, I think when you stop learning, you start dying, I think. I mean, because the world's always changing, right? So uh, thank you for that super chat, my friend. I appreciate it. And if there's another one, I'll, I'll scroll through here. All right. So let me take a look here and uh, let's take a look at what you guys have to say, you guys and gals. Looks like we're at about 130 uh, viewers. For those of you that shared the link, thank you so much. And Fishman Marcus says, hit the, hit the thumbs up. Thank you, Fishman. I appreciate the uh, backup there. And let's take a look here what you're talking about, and I'll answer any questions you might have. Denny's Aquatic spots some expert Matic filters. Thank you, Denny. I, I, I appreciate you. Hope you use the Amazon link for that. And uh, I'm sure the folks at Expert Matic appreciate that. I like them. I like them. I do. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta fiddle with them a little bit. You know, because the air that's getting sucked in can make a little noise, or you know, you play with them a little bit. You gotta like anything. You gotta dial them in. But uh, I mean, they're workhorses. I have them in three tanks right now, and they just run and run and run. Let's see here. So, Fishman Marcus. You know, I think that's good. I think that's good advice, uh, Fishman Marcus. I believe in ways in always learning, but can't agree to learn from others. I believe you should learn on your own, but consider advice. I mean, in the end, I mean, in the end, Fishman Marcus, you got to make up your own mind. It doesn't matter what anybody says on YouTube, because a good percentage of the advice probably out there on YouTube is wrong, you know, or, or it's off, or it's, or it's working for that person. Now, when I tell you something is working for me, you have to realize a couple of factors. One of them is, where am I? In other words, what's my water like? What kind of fish am I keeping? How often am I changing my water? How often am I servicing my filters? There's a lot of moving parts. So something working for me, I mean, let's say, let's say Denny's comment on the expert matic. Okay, you pick up a couple expert matics, you put them in the tank and you forget about them. And after about four months, you're like, hey, these things don't work. They're not pushing much water anymore. Well, yeah, you're not servicing them. Every couple of weeks, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pull them out. I'll rinse the sponges in, in, in a bucket of tank water. Maybe run a, bris a bristle uh, pipe cleaner uh, into the power head and, and you know, get it all cleaned out and then put it back in. So they, they run well. Now, if you're not servicing that way, uh, they might not work for you the way they work for me. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts and in the end, you have to follow your own advice and do your own research. You know, so I know uh, when I first got into fish keeping, I was chasing what whatever was being pushed out there. Somebody was keeping um, somebody was keeping a certain kind of a holy rock. Someone was keeping holy rock. Oh, I got I have to have holy. I got to get holy rock. Stuff is really expensive if you buy real holy rock. Uh, somebody had a Universal Rocks background. Got to have a Universal Rocks background. Uh, so anyway, I, I was just chasing. And then finally, you sort of settle down into your own style. And I'll, I'll say this. Unplugging, completely unplugging in California, selling off everything, and then arriving with a blank slate here in Nashville did require me to have to re really, really think what direction do I want to go in? What, what do I want to do? What, what products do I want to use? And, and, and I'll tell you, it, 
it's all leaning in the direction of simplicity. I, I want things as simple, as simple as possible. I want it to work. Uh, cost is a consideration, but not the ultimate consideration, but it's a consideration. And I want it, and I want it to be very simple. And uh, but it has to work. It has to provide a quality, a quality, you know, ecosystem environment for the fish. And this is why I'm 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 doing the steps I'm doing. This is why I'm I'm running with it with it a deeper substrate. Why I'm running with simple sponge filtration, uh, things of this nature. I'm also a bit more cautious in some areas. When you do what I do, you 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 have people tell you things. Uh, you get emails from people. I get a lot of emails from people telling me that they had a heater malfunction and they cooked their fish. They ended up overheating the tank or the heater burst. You know, they, they did a water change. They forgot to turn the heater off. The heater was exposed to the air. It didn't have an automatic shutoff and it exploded. Or the thermostat, whatever, inside the heater, the control unit in the heater didn't work and it just burned the fish. So I'm using controllers. I'm becoming a little bit cautious in, in some areas and a little bit um, way over to the, to the side of simplicity in other areas, like filter media. You know, filter media, I think I, think I saw half man, half cichlid on the, on the uh, stream here, and he'll attest to this. I'm looking at, at sponges. I'm looking at sponges. I'm looking at mat, you know, matten sponges, porrid sponges. A company called Swiss Tropical sells them, and uh, they've been around for a while. I met the owner, very nice guy, and um, very simple. It's a very simple medium. You leave it alone. It grows bacteria like crazy, and at the same time, I'm also growing bacteria in my substrate. I very lightly, lightly rake about a quarter inch on the top just to freshen it up. But I leave the bottom pretty much alone. I just leave it alone. And I like using power heads or wave makers, depending what it is, to lift up the, the waste, the detritus, the poop, and get it over to the filter intakes. So my designs are very, very simple. Now it is gonna probably appear to you to be a little bit complicated when I set up that 90 because I want to do that homemade DIY sump. But I'll tell you something. All a sump is, it's just basically like a hang on back filter with long tubes. That's that's all a sump is. A sump is actually very, very simple. People have a lot of this mystique idea about a sump. And I had that idea. I was intimidated by sumps. I thought I was going to flood my house. I, I did I did get the floor wet a couple times and I was learning about them. But once I understood sums, they're basically just, they're basically a canister with an open top. That they don't work on a vacuum like a canister does, but they're 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 a filter. They're basically just a filter. Water comes in one end, goes through media, and goes back in the tank. That's all that's all they do. And once you dial it in, so that if the pump fails. The sump doesn't overflow. Uh, or if the overflow in the tank becomes blo blocked and the pump from the sump keeps pumping, the tank doesn't overflow. So in other words, you have to dial it in so that in the worst possible circumstances, you're not going to overflow. And once you do that, once you've mastered how to do that, you're in real good shape. You're in real good shape. And... Uh, and you don't worry anymore. The first week or two that I had a sump running uh, back in my tank, my, the 150 I had in California, the first week, probably the first three or four days, I didn't sleep much. I was listening and I'd wake up because I thought I heard a splash. <laughs> I thought for sure, you know, I was going to have to have like, you know, like an inflatable, inflatable craft that I could jump into and... <laughs> You'll flood my bedroom. And uh, so, but then once I, I started learning more and, I, and I've had a bad habit, I've had a bad habit over the years of jumping in, I just jump in 
and then make a bunch of mistakes and then pull back and go, all right, that didn't work. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me go watch some more videos. Let me ask some more questions. I think I asked Denny, uh, one of our moderators here, Denny Rudell, he, he, uh, he gave me some tips on setting up a sump. He'd been running a sump for years. And I watched a whole bunch. Not a lot of videos out there. I had to, I had to go into the salt community. A lot of the salties out there, they have sumps. And, uh, but I'll tell you, when you consider the benefits, the added water volume, remember, dilution is the solution to pollution. <laughs> dilution and pollution. So you add these extra gallons. So you're diluting, you're diluting ammonia, you're diluting nitrite and phosphates and whatever it is. So you got dilution going. And so you have this extra, so you're, so you're 120 gallon tank becomes a 150 or 150 becomes a 180 or 190 depending on the size of your sump uh, so a huge advantage that way the amount of oxygenation that occurs from that water coming from the main tank and then trickling down or going through socks or however you do it to get into the sump the, the ability to put the heaters in the sump so they're not even in the tank so you don't have these big atrocious things here on the bottom like I have in my tank here. All those advantages make a sump like really the king of, of filtration. That's not a knock on canisters. I love canisters. I love hang on backs. I love these little expertmatic powerhead filters. So they're all good. Whatever you're using, if it's working for you, great. But um, really, if you get a big tank, anything over 100 gallons, seriously consider consider a sump and uh, you can drill a tank and uh, if, if you don't want to drill a tank you can buy a tank already with an overflow box or you can use what are called overflow boxes which, which, uh, which are like your hang on back filters except they just have hoses that go down to the sump so instead of going to a motor or a pump in the hang on back filter they go into a tank and then that tank has the pump and it sends the water back up. So you can have like a hang on back. It uses a siphon system and uh, you can put one way flow valves. You can drill holes in your return tubes so that there's no way on earth that too much water is gonna siphon down. So there's lots of safeguards you can put in so you'll never have to worry about flooding your room. And uh, nothing's easier to work on than a sump. Reach in, you pull it out, rinse it, you put it back. I mean, it's literally that fast. And um, unlike a canister where, you know, I've gotten pretty fast with canisters. I can usually service them in under you know, 20 minutes or so. But, um, you know, you crack them open, you know, you, you gotta refill them before you start them. And there's, there's a lot of steps. Um, sumps are very, very simple. It's all right out, you reach in, you grab. You, you, so anyway, I'm a big advocate, as you can tell, and I'm very anxious to get back into sumps, and there's a good chance that the three large tanks, the custom-made 90 and the two 120s, uh, 125, are, are probably, there's a good chance they might all end up on sumps. We'll see. I may do a, a combination of sump and hang on back or sump and canister, only because... I love that that idea of a backup and redundancy. So that if your sump pump fails, uh, you know, or your hang on back fails, you've got this other filter that is working. And so right now in these tanks, I have the Marine Land, the Marine Land uh, hang on backs, and then I've got the, ex the expert Maddox. So while I'm servicing one, the other one is running. So I always have some circulation. There's always some, you know, there's always some, some filtration going on. I do leave my filters on when I do water changes. I take the water change down to the level where the filters can still run. I also have my heaters horizontal, so I don't worry about my heaters being overexposed except for one of the cobalt heaters in the 29 gallon where uh, that Eureka Red is, is currently living. And, uh, but I really watch it close and I push the heater down a little bit when I do a water change, not to expose it to the air. Now, some heaters like these here, 
some of these heaters you're seeing these days, like this Hyger Titanium, some of these heaters will detect, somehow they detect that they're out of the water and they shut off. They have some built-in shutoffs. When people come up with that kind of innovation, you you stop and ask yourself, why didn't we have this 10 years ago? There are some really sophisticated companies out there. Eheim, uh, Cobalt, uh, even you know Aquion, API, those, they have a lot of money, a lot of research. Big research budget. Bluebull, I mean, these companies have the wherewithal to come up with this stuff. And you get this, this company that was unknown to me, but apparently it's very big in China, sends me a heater that shuts off when, when it detects that it's out of the water. It's like, duh, come on. <laughs> and when you talk to people, how many, you know how many times I've got an email, my heater blew up because I did a water change and I forgot to unplug it. So anyway, let's see here. GP bands hasn't fully colored up yet. You must be talking about one of my fish. Let's see. I think I missed a couple of super chats. By the way, if you super chatted and you don't have stickers, send me your address to ben.o.cichlet. I will send you stickers. I'll send you the new stickers that we have for the channel. Vinny's, Vinny's light fixture and the uh, Sam's uh, little coffee fish here. I'll send you a coffee fish. And, uh, and the biggest super chatter today in the continental United, you know, I have to say this, and I hate to say it because I love you guys in Canada. I know some of you are razzing me up there in Canada, uh, United Kingdom, uh, <laughs> South America, Mexico, Philippines, Gibraltar. I mean, you're all over the place but I got to keep it in the continental United States because of shipping. But the top, top super chat in the continental United States, send me your, your uh, at, the end of the, at the end of today's live stream, send me your uh, mailing address. I'll get you my last old school sticker, a Cichlid Shack sticker, and the ever so handy aquarium co-op towel. This is a great fish room towel. I love it. And uh, my friends over at Aquarium Co-op, they send them over to me and I, and I tell them, send me more, send me more. I want to give them away to my viewers. <laughs> All right. Let me answer some of your questions. Let's see what you're talking about here on the chat. And uh, hey, Pose. How are you, Pose? Disabled keeper of fish. Glad you're here. Hey, Adam Brown, good, good to see you. Hey, Frankie. James Manning, glad you're here, James. I'm looking to see if I missed a super chat. Adam C., hey, buddy. Adam C. in the house. Check out Adam C. channel. Uh, Adam C. on YouTube. Check out his channel. Great fish keeper. And uh, has some great, great fish. Some big predator, what you call predator haps. And uh, we've been uh, talking for quite a while now about fish and uh, YouTube and what have you. Hey, Daniel. Glad you're here, Daniel. Daniel Lopez, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate that a lot. Chub, Chubby Guppy, love that name. Okay, so let's open this up to some questions. What do you What do you have on your mind? What's uh, What do you want to tell me? What's been bugging you? What do you want some advice on? Go ahead, throw it out there. Let's take it up. Thank you, Candy, for sharing Adam's channel. Adam is one of the... Uh, one of the good guys out there, somebody that I do not hesitate to recommend. And uh, 
Fishman Marcus, titanium heaters are the best. Angela Millet, love the mug. Did you get one, Angela? Did you get a mug? And let's see here, Jamie. What? Jamie has moved to Corpus Christi. You're not going to miss the winters, right? Corpus Corpus is a nice town. I've been there. It's got a nice vibe to it. It's a little bit kind of like Austin a little bit. Kind of, kind of has a nice, just a nice vibe. I like it. I've been exploring Nashville. Uh, there's some great, there's a place called Leaper's Fork, downtown Franklin. I'm discovering just some great places here in the Nashville area. I'm loving it down here. Adam C. comes in big. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. The, the, the challenge has been th the, the, the gauntlet. <laughs> the challenge is out there. Who's going to get the towel? All right. <clears throat> Jamie, what's a great way to move four tanks of fish 1,500 miles? Because I still have yet to. Ooh, boy. Well, you know, if the weather warms up, Jamie, and you're taking them in your car, you could use um, styrofoam, you know, styrofoam containers, the kind you'd use for a picnic. They're, you know, they're pretty insulated. They'll keep the temperature relatively stable. You know, the only thing you worry about styrofoam is that you can't break it if you hit it hard against something, in which case you can get a big, like a hard plastic, you know, party container. You can also use tubs. You can also get USB plugins, so you can actually have a heater. You can get heaters that you can um, you can buy plugins for your car. They go into your cigarette lighter, and you can actually plug, you know, a pl you can plug things into them. Regular things. You can charge your computer. You can you can also, um, you know, you can probably run. I'd run maybe a, a, a low wattage heater. You can get bubblers. You know, you can, uh, they have bubblers that are battery powered. You can also have bubblers you can run into a USB, like those, um, the ones I use from, from, I think it's Cobalt. The, um, oh, what are they called? I have one running right now. Those Cobalt pumps that they, they run on a battery pack. But they have some that you can also, again, you can get a plug-in that goes into a cigarette lighter or a USB uh, port and, We'll keep it, enough oxygen in there. You can keep it warm. If it's if the temperature is warmed up, and if you're keeping your car kind of warm anyway, with your you're not going to have to worry too much about temperature as much. Oxygen might be a concern. I wouldn't feed them too much during the trip because your food is going to create waste. That waste is going to create ammonia. So I wouldn't necessarily feed them too much. You can probably fast them for a couple days. They'll be okay. You can fast fish for two to four days they'll do fine and that'll minimize the waste don't feed them too much before the trip just like you know ask anybody who ships fish they usually will not feed them the day before so that they're not creating a lot of waste in the bag when they're when they're shipping them you can apply some of those same techniques so uh, that might help the chubby guppy says tractor supply 110 gallons stock tank 60 dollars not a bad idea. I was at Tractor Supply yesterday. That's where I bought these. Uh, <laughs> that's where I bought all this stuff for the uh, for the stand I'm going to build. I was about to check out. I had one of these squares, and I was about to check out. And the guy said, "Hey, we've got one on the discount on the discount rack that uh, comes with a level, and it's about a buck more. Do you want it?" And so I, you know, he includes this level with it. And so, uh, a buck more, I said, sure, I'll take it. Anyway, so <clears throat> I am going to be jumping into the world of building a, a, uh, a stand for an aquarium. Wish me luck. I've, uh, I'm, I'm so scared it's going to collapse. I'm probably going to build it so strong that it'll hold, like you can put a, a battleship on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm going to use four by four for the legs. The four corners are going to be four by fours. I'm going to use uh, two by sixes for the for the top and bottom frame. It's going to be like it's going to be a battleship. I'm not going to be ever really concerned as long as I get you know get all the angles right, get the screws in right, 
it, that thing is not gonna, it's not gonna collapse. So uh, I'm not worried about it. So Adam C, thank you so much for that, my friend. Very appreciated. And uh, let's see what questions you have here. Uh, pound sign SLS, Ben, where can I order a mug? The wife has laid claim to the one I won last week. <laughs> Under every one of my videos, there's a link to Teespring. I think they might have changed their name to Spring. But under any of my videos, you'll see pictures of products and usually right there. Just click on that, go to the Teespring site, and follow the steps. And uh, I'll tell your wife I said thank you. <laughs> Candy, maybe you can share the uh, Teespring link. That's funny. And Angel, drinking from mine. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So, um, <clears throat> okay, any other questions you want to ask? James, used stumps are used stumps. Yeah, you know, if you can buy a, a, a very often the stumps are um, acrylic. And acrylic, I mean, acrylic just lasts forever. It's a, it's a sump. It's under your tank. You're not going to care if it's got a couple scratches. Just don't buy it if it has cracks. But if it has no cracks, a couple scratches, who cares? Goes under the tank. They run forever. So uh, a used acrylic sumps are great. Brand new ones can be very expensive. You go get an Aesop or, or a, you know, one of these, one of these brand new, fancy looking sumps with all the baffles and they, uh, they have refu refugium chambers and all this fancy stuff, which, which freshwater people usually don't need all of that. But you're gonna pay three hundred dollars for, you know. For a sum, so, and then there's me where I get the 29 gallon, you know, the dollar a gallon sale. Uh, I get a 29 gallon tank, and I'm gonna put a couple rigid filters in it, and that's gonna be my sump. I'll probably be, I'll be into it maybe 50, 60, but not counting the pump, but maybe 50, 60 bucks for the for the whole setup. Then another maybe 100 bucks for a good sump, a good pump. So I'll be into it maybe 150 bucks, uh, as opposed to just 300 for just the sump. So. So an advantage to DIY on the, uh... all right, let's see what kind of questions you, you've got. Well, Tony, Tony Cancellieri, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, has a question about bottom feeders. And, um, uh, you know, you're in in my in my mind the 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 best bottom feeders are the um, your synodontist cats. You know, your synodontist catfish, especially if they're you know the, the Malawi you know the synodontist Malawi catfish, cuckoo cats, things like this. I used to have a panda uh, and one other type that got really big real fast, but they they come in a lot of different varieties. These synodontist catfish, and they're great. They're very active. I, th I think they're they're as cute as all get out, and um, they they never stop moving. Uh, sometimes they'll they'll hide, but they're always working. They're always cleaning up the bottom. Because of uh, of the way African cichlids are, I mean, they're always sifting and moving around the substrate. You could make a case for not needing any bottom feeders at all, because the the cichlids are constantly. You know, they're constantly picking up and spitting out substrate. But if, if you really want one, synodontists are nice. I had, you know, I had some clowns, some some clown loaches. I, they did great. They lived for years with my cichlids, never had a problem. They do come from different water. They come from a softer water. Some people felt that they shouldn't be with African cichlids. But they did great. Some loaches, maybe, but uh, certainly Cynodonus cats. Bristlenose plecos, I think, are the best. They don't get too big, like your like your regular plecos that become you know enormous, and you eventually have to get rid of them. Uh, so probably Cynodonus. <clears throat> so let's see here. Any more questions? 
Fishman Marcus says that his debit card is uh, at its limit. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, let's see here. Andrea's Herbal and Things. Andrea's Herbal and Things. Greetings, Ben. I've been treating my aquarium for three weeks. I lost a quarry, tetras, and my dwarf flag from a mysterious illness. I'm guessing Colomaris, Colomaris, all is well now, but how do you treat outbreaks? Wow. Colomaris is a vicious disease. Uh, it, it does present itself in different ways. Sometimes you get what they call a saddle, a white, a white area that goes from the back of the dorsal fin down the side of the fish. Uh, it uh, it can show up as a fungus around the lips, gills. It can appear like thin rot. It it it's a, it's just a nasty nasty disease. I've talked to people who have lost all their stock. You need what is called a gram negative, gram negative antibiotic. You can buy gram negative infused food on. Um, on eBay, I believe, they have gram-negative antibiotic-infused food. Uh, buy from a reputable vendor that's been selling it for years. Uh, have some of that on hand. You can drop some of that in. I was able to stop it with a thing called Marison Plus. Marison Plus, it's a uh, Fritz product. And it uh, it's a real powerful antibiotic. General cure might be too general. Uh, API Furin 2, the Furin 2 product. Um, let me see, I'll show you. It's called Furin 2. And I keep uh, several boxes around. It's good stuff. And it's um, open red sores, gill disease, fin and tail rot, eye, eye cloud, body slime. So uh, I think it's a gram negative, but that's a that's a very nasty disease. You got to jump on it real quick. Unfortunately, I used uh, like Pima Fix, Melafix. You know, I tried some herbal remedies at first, and what happened is it allowed the the disease ended up really, really getting hold. And um, there's some theories that it uses any waste in the tank. That's where it that's where it actually um, will grow. It'll, it'll grow. The bacteria will grow on the waste that's in the tank. And I had a background. I had a background that was uh, separate a little bit from the back of the tank, but it covered the whole back of the tank but it had a little separation. And so some waste would get back there. And when you have a background that covers the whole back, how often are you gonna pull that back and clean back there? Not too often. So it's a good place for uh, bacteria to grow. Also under the decor, it's amazing how bacteria can get under your rocks. Even though your rocks are pushed into the substrate, you lift them up, you'll be shocked how much junk has gotten down there. And that can serve as a home for a bacteria that then starts to um, it just grows and then infects your fish. So um, good cleaning, you know, good thorough cleaning. Be sure you pull all your carbon out before you before you treat. Hit it with something like Purin 2, something strong, or a Marison product from Fritz, or some food that's infused with antibiotics. Like some of the kind I mentioned, you can find on eBay. That's gram negative, and uh, you know, hit it really hard, really fast, and uh, then when you're done treating, put some carbon in there and get all the residual meds out of there. When you're done treating, do a good water change while you're treating. I don't think they recommend water changes while you're treating, but uh, when the treatment is over, do a real good water change. 
And I've got a product. I'll show you something. This is a uh, a pad. I'll just maybe I can pull it out. This is a pad from my friends up at the co-op, Aquarium Co-op. This pad, I'm not gonna open it up over the computer because it'll probably drop carbon, but this is a carbon infused, a carbon infused pad. And what you do is you just, it's, it's, pretty, it's a good size, it's, it's folded in two. So you double it up, I mean, you can, you, uh, you unfold it and then you just cut it to shape. So it fits your filter. I cut, I cut pieces of this and I put it into this after I, tre I treated this tank a while back because I was starting to see a little bit of flashing. So I thought there might be some, maybe some parasites going on. So I pulled up, so after I was all done with that treatment, I took some of these pads and I cut them to shape, and, I, and because they're stiff, they just s slide right into the slot. They slide right into the filter slot, and they stand perfect. And um, and then you run them for about a month, maybe six weeks, and then you throw them out after you've medicated. If you haven't medicated, if it's just a routine filter maintenance, you can probably leave them in longer. But when I'm trying to remove medication, I'll go ahead and 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 put carbon. I'll put carbon in for about a month. If you uh, don't have the pads, what you can do is you can get a um, you can get a mesh bag. And I, I'll tell you the the carbon I recommend. I'm not sponsored by Seachem, but the carbon I recommend uh, if you're going to use a mesh bag is the Seachem Matrix Carbon. Seachem Matrix Carbon. It is at my Amazon store, the Amazon.com/shop/BenOchart. Seachem matrix carbon. That carbon absorbs unbelievably. And I say that because I did an un, unintentional test where I put a some like carbon I picked up in, at, at a big box store. I filled a bag with that, a mesh bag, and with some of the matrix. And I happened to lay it down where I was doing some work by a sink. And then when I looked at it a couple minutes later, all, the puddle around the matrix carbon was gone. The area around the matrix carbon was dry. It had pulled all the water up into the carbon. Whereas the, the other carbon, which I think was like API or, or uh, I forget what, some commercial brand of activated charcoal. And it, it, it was just sitting in the puddle. Nothing had really changed. Where the matrix carbon had pulled the, <laughs> I was shocked. I said, man, oh man, there's something about this matrix carbon. So um, anyway. So do that. I hope that helps with that. A cholomeris is something I wouldn't wish on anybody. It's a horrible disease. I went through it. If you go back through my through my um, videos, you'll find a series of videos right around the time of when I posted um, my fish are dying, and um, a video called my fish are dying, and and it was just it was just nasty. So at any rate, let's see what else you got to say here. Hey Josh. Josh Cunning, uh, we got Cunningham Cichlids in the house. Josh is the real deal. Check check out his uh, Cunningham Cichlids. I had the pleasure of meeting him at the um, American Cichlid Association meeting in Houston, I believe. Let's see here. Garlic, you're right. Fishman Marcus, garlic is great. It's also a great way to get a finicky fish to start eating. You can use products like Focus or Garlic Guard and or buy products that already have garlic in them, like the Omega Cichlid, frozen cichlid cubes have garlic already in them. And they will, um, fish that normally are not eating will go after that food because they can't resist it. It's like catnip. Solar King Ronnie, my wife is throwing out pantyhose a couple of weeks ago. I scored four pairs. I just cut the feet off and don't wear them around the house. <laughs> uh, 
that actually will work. It will work for your carbon. It'll work for your uh, media. I don't even see pantyhose anymore. Is pantyhose still a thing? I don't know. I certainly haven't worn them in quite a while. <laughs> Sean, let's do a green tear and a Dempsey. You know I want a green tear and a Dempsey. I'm just trying to find the right opportunity when to when to kind of when to add those fish to the collection because I've got to have the I got to have the quarantine tank. I've got to have the tank to graduate them into. They have to be the right size. I want them to come in a little bit smaller than what I have in the tank, right? So that they don't come in and just start running over everybody. So I want them to kind of go from being subdominant and kind of grow up in the tank a little bit. I certainly don't want them beating up the Sevrams or the Geos. So I'm waiting for the right moment. I had somebody offer a beautiful uh, green terror, but he was a little big. It was a 300 mile trip to get him. I ended up not getting him. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I definitely want those fish. So it's just a matter of how do I how do I time it so I so I add them in the best possible way and it doesn't result in a in a bloodbath, right? Because we know, I mean, there's anything with the name terror, terror, convict, you know, anything with those kind of names. <laughs> Usually the word red. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see here. Ron Foss, I uh, have a couple of those ESOP overflows. Yeah, I've got an ESOP, I've got one. It's the PF800, PF800 overflow box. And that's the one I'm probably gonna be using for the 90. Never used them before. I've used uh, the overflow boxes that are built in to the drill tank. So the hole is at the bottom of the overflow box. The reason I love the, the idea of an overflow box is that in the event of a pump failure, uh, you're only, you're only going to have water go into the sump to the bottom of the cutouts of the overflow box, right? Those are the ones that are built into the tank. So you've got this tower, and it's got some teeth at the top that the water goes through from the top of the tower, goes down to a hole at the bottom of the tank, and then goes into the sump. But the water level of the tank will only go to the bottom of the teeth. So you're not going to lose that much water. You're not going to flood your sump. Uh, the problem with the overflow boxes is that the siphon, you know, the siphon might, like there's some problem can be with the siphon or, you know, and so your intake, but there's ways of setting it up with those boxes so that they only can drop a certain amount of water from your tank. So that the whole trick is to get them dialed in so that you can overflow the 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 uh, sump. That's the whole trick. And uh, there's lots of little tips. I've got a, a playlist, uh, a sump playlist. And in the last two or three videos, just ignore the first four or five videos. <laughs> They're learning and making all the mistakes. But in the last two or three videos, I really dial in all the tricks that one can do, like drilling a hole in the, uh, in the return line. You drill a hole just below the water line so that if you ever get a back siphon, the back siphon breaks when it gets to that hole. So, you know, little tips like that. And of course, you can put a one-way valve, right? You can put a flat valve so that only flows one way so that if you do get a back siphon, it can't get past that one-way valve. So um, there's lots of tricks, lots of tricks. So your sump will never, uh, will never overflow on you. So, um, you know, Angelo, Angelo, your comment actually is really important to me because, um, and I say this with the group, the, uh, you know, we have that group, the Ben O apostrophe cyclic group. And I always stress that that group has cichlid in the name, but it's for everybody. And that's the direction and the emphasis and purpose that I've always had. I've been, you know, 
I, I fell in love with African cichlids and that was what I was keeping a lot of. And a lot of my videos were about African, you know, the, 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 the trials and turbulations <laughs> of keeping African cichlids. However, the, uh, the bulk of the, of the videos that I upload have application in any type of system, except maybe salt water and planted tanks, probably. <laughs> maybe not, I don't know. But uh, so your comment doesn't mean a lot to me. And I do hope that people that do not keep cichlids will come to the channel. And especially now, when I start diversifying, I do have a planted tank in mind. I am gonna be adding some angels probably to this tank behind me here. Maybe some uh, some of those koi angels. I will be getting a Dempsey. I mean, there's there's stuff. There's stuff that's going to be going on, and I'm going to be diversifying. And so, um, you know, so make it more fish keeper. Am I ever going to get into salt water? Um, man, I tell you, when I see coral, if you've watched some of my fish store walkthroughs, the corals to me are fascinating and. And if inventory king Paul, if you're on, uh, you you can talk, you can you can talk speak to this. Corals are to me are just unreal, unreal. And so are some of the saltwater fish colors, totally unreal. Do I have the time? You know the wavelength, <laughs> the available uh, bandwidth <laughs> to add that to the mix. I don't know, but certainly uh, there's going to be diversification going on. But, um, all right, so um, with that being said, I, I wanna just give a big shout out to anyone who uh, did a super chat. Thank you for the support. A big shout out to all of you that are here because by just being here, you support the channel a lot. Uh, a big shout out to my, to, my, um, to my moderators, Candy, Danny, uh, Kevin, and uh, Denny, GP, and you're the best, best moderators on YouTube. And uh, I hope to see you this coming Saturday. I'm going to be doing a live stream Saturday. And then the following Saturday, I think I'm going to be off. I'm going to be heading down a thing called the Natchez. Uh, there's a, a road that goes from Tennessee to Mississippi to the, to the, I think down to the Gulf. It's 400 miles. I'm going to be driving it, uh, scoping out some bicycle trails and uh, checking out the Mississippi. And so I'll take that Saturday off. I'll probably have a video to post. But um, tomorrow I'm going to be posting the um, Geophagus surinamensis profile video. I think it's, it's going to be the one on the Geo. Tomorrow's the, the Geophagus. So watch uh, tomorrow's video on the Geo. Fascinating little fish. They become beautiful when they get large. They get six, seven inches. They get good size. And uh, they become absolutely gorgeous. It's called a red-striped earth eater is the common name. Geophagus surinamensis from Suriname originally, their country of origin, even though right now they're, I think they're bred and sold out of Singapore quite a bit now. And uh, the ones I buy from the aquatic critter are bred locally. So beautiful fish, constantly sifting sand. Here's one right here. Starting to get a little bit of red in the fins, gorgeous. I also have some AC Heckleis in there, the thread fin. Threadfin, um, and uh, they're beautiful. They get the long trailing fins. And if you go to the uh, Ben O. Postrophe Cichlid Facebook group, you'll see the uh, banner of the group this last month, for the month of March, was an albino AC Hecali, which is just off the hook, an unbelievable fish. Albino AC Hecali, gorgeous. Thread fin, long trailing threads that come off of the fins. Absolutely gorgeous. You'll fall in love with that fish when you see it. I guarantee it. So um, one, last, uh, one last reminder. Be sure to uh, be sure to hit that sub button and the bell so you get notifications. Tell YouTube you like the channel and that way they'll uh, recommend it. Follow me on Instagram at, at ben.o.cichlid on Instagram for a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I don't post anywhere else. And come on over to the Facebook group. If you wanna join the Facebook group, please, please be sure to answer all the questions 
or the moderators don't let you into the Facebook group, okay? And uh, I think that's it. Thank you to all my friends. You're the best. You really do rock. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.